Pamela Gray, screenwriter of Conviction. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, I'll do it. I gotta take a press conference with Sam Rock and Pamela Gray. Here for the screen of Conviction. Well, the story of the abdication crisis and the coming of the Second World War, you know, is quite a famous story, particularly in America, because, you know, King Edward VIII uh, gave the throne up to marry the American Wallace Simpson, and because she was, you know, twice divorced, um, she, you know, he, he wasn't allowed to marry her because the King of England is the head of the church, and the church doesn't recognise marriage to a twice divorced woman. So, so you, you know, had this huge crisis in England and. You know, however, the story that people didn't know is that the, the guy who had to take over, the younger brother, um, King George the Sixth, um, you, you know, had this terrible stammer, and 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 for him to become king uh, at that at a, at a time when radio had just taken off as a mass medium, and and suddenly as a king you had to speak live to the to the world, was a complete nightmare. And 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 what's so fascinating about our story is it reveals the fact that behind this king, and key to his success was this therapist, the speech therapist, who was a maverick Australian. He was a failed Shakespearean actor. Uh, he wasn't even a doctor, but he was a genius at speech therapy. And it was this uh, maverick outsider figure who, who helped King George VI find his voice um, and lead the nation beautifully into the Second World War um, with, the, with, the, with the help of this newfound ability to speak. There's a, there's, a, there's a perception that if you're king you must be incredibly privileged and you must live a life in the lap of luxury and to realize that this, this is a story of a man who absolutely did not want to be king, um, who you know, to, the, to the tips of his fingers was terrified by it because he couldn't speak is, is fascinating because it shows that privilege is a complicated notion. It's only privilege if you're really pleased to be there. If you don't want the job of king then it's not a privilege. Colin Firth, Jeffrey Rush, how did you cast this? What were you looking for in the characters that would play such important critical roles? Well Jeffrey was easy. I mean you know you talk. You want an Australian actor to play this part. It had to be an Australian, <coughs> and it was kind of a list of one. You know, first idea Jeffrey Rush, last idea Jeffrey Rush, uh, and Colin I think has a extraordinary um, niceness and humanity and humility and goodness as a as a as a person as a as a human being that I felt was very true to the character of King George the Sixth, who we all know from history was an extraordinary sweet and good man, a, you know, a gentle man, a meek man, and, and, and Colin's soul and spirit are very, very, is very well suited to play this character. Uh, where, where he had to act, however, is that, is that Colin is one of the world's great talkers. I mean, he's, he, he, he loves nothing better than telling a very long anecdote, so much so that during the shoot we had to, I had to impose a two-minute anecdote rule on, oh, sorry, during the rehearsal, a two-minute maximum anecdote rule, and during the, the, the shoot, a 30-second maximum anecdote rule. So for the, for the idea that Colin is the great raconteur had to play a man who couldn't speak, that was very funny. <laughs> I can relate to that, speaking a lot. Um, now for the lightning round, the Stark Threes. What's your favorite beer or wine? What's my favorite beer or wine? Oh, my gosh. Uh, it's a sparkling red from Darrenberg in the Adelaide Hills, uh, which is um, near where my mother grew up, because I'm half Australian, half English, and um, we have a house uh, on the coast of South Australia, and we drive through Darrenberg, and we have this amazing sparkling red whenever we go there. It's always interesting how um, wines, you have a certain memory with them as well. What's your favorite dish or food you love to eat? Oh my gosh. Um, I c probably steak. steak. Big steak. red meat, man. Sounds like Australian, English, yeah, red right? Wine, steak sounds like my half Australian side. Final, and I know you're going to love this one. What's your favorite gadget? Uh, the camera that that man is holding right there, which I'm desperate to get my hands on, which is the new EOS T2i. <laughs> man, Cannon's going to love this one. Well, thank you so much, Tom Hooper. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Very nice to meet you. No other reasons. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, yeah. I went to prison for about 20 years just to get used to it, and get a feel. <laughs>
this is the D5 with a GT2i. Wow. The GT2i, I haven't even heard of frames a second. Is that even more? Is that, is, I think we have another sync that sound with that. Is that the idea? I'll do dual audio and sync it. Yeah. So we'll use that one there, and then I do the shotgun. How do you sync it? Just by ear? Premiere, Premiere Pro. Yeah, she'll make a little clap. Oh, there's a software thing. Yeah. Or it's all cool. like crazy with your Go. makes your brain in the scrambled eggs because just oh, doing one bit. Valley, but you're actually having